Divine Truth Spirit Experiences Discussion Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of the second part of this personal experience from spirits is Stuart's Progress and Study of Jesus, during which Mary Channel Stuart, a behavioral scientist who has been studying Jesus since Jesus was eight years old and has talked with Jesus two weeks ago, who talks about how the spirit body is affected by sin, observations of Jesus' spirit body, changes that occurred in Jesus at different ages, and the new discoveries. The session was recorded on the 3rd of April 2018 from 12 p.m. in Wilstel, Queensland, Australia. So, sort of returning though back to the discussion a little, the the um, the uh, the spirits that were restricted today that you saw restricted, mm -hmm. um, you can now see them more clearly. Is this the case? Yes. Yes. I'm now much more aware of them. Yes, and you can. You are you a bit more sensitive to their condition as well? Yes. Yeah. So you can feel how malevolent they are, and that their intentions are very. Uh, rageful, dark, damaging, murderous, that mm. kind of thing. Mm. Um, I am interested, though, in the, the – because obviously I've observed your the course of your life as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested – now that I acknowledge um, how much um, influence that you're under or mm -hmm. how much attack you're under mm – -hmm. I'm interested in the the decisions because I've observed your behaviour and decision making over mm -hmm. all of these years. Mm -hmm. I'm interested now in the correlation between this influence and what mm -hmm. you have done in your life and the events that have occurred. And you would also surely see too. Would you have understood how, why I was had why I had so much fear in me? Because I, I don't know if you would have correlated that either. Would you? No, and this is where it has been very unusual mm -hmm. uh, observing you because it, there's a brightness but also a lot of – so number one, there's a brightness in the body but also there's a lot of um, sort of conditions where if we saw them in another body, mm -hmm. there would be – a. a a dullness to mm. the form mm. but for some reason yourself and those others who have have returned mm -hmm. uh, appear to have a brightness in your form but very significant issues also mm. that makes them sort of stand out mm. from a visual perspective because it's um there's we're used to seeing that level of I issue so fear for problem, example if, so you had, if a fear. person had a level of fear that like all of the persons who returned have then the form of the body would be um much less defined there would be a graying in the body yeah. uh not not this brightness and also the decisions and behavior because as you know that's what i've been studying the decisions and behavior in that person would be significantly different. Would be different than mm. those that we observe. Yeah. So, in other words, they'd be governed by the fear they're in or governed by mm. the rage they're in. Mm. Whereas in the 14, it doesn't always seem that way. No. Mm. Which is an interesting uh, thing in itself, isn't it? So, now can you now you can now see sort of reasons for that. In that yes. The 14 are attracting large amounts of malevolent spirits, obviously, they're in a tremendous amount of fear mm. uh, compared to the average person on the planet. And that then causes these sort of differing conditions to be I I present in, at the same time mm. in the same body. Mm. Mm. So um, when you examine that all now, when you examine all of this, uh, you know, should we call it a confluence of, mm. uh, of conditions, mm -hmm. um, are you now able to separate them a bit better now and to see what their originating cause must be? Yes, although there is, it's so multifaceted mm -hmm. that it, it's a study in and of itself and, and I'm sure that I, I'll be very engaged in just studying your life and the factors impacting on your life. 
for, for many years to come. Mm. And also to take the opportunity to sort of rewind mm -hmm. in my own analysis mm. and go back to those times when I observed you and uh, without the full knowledge of what was occurring and try to reanalyze the evidence that was there and reanalyze the factors that may have been present and, and perhaps speak with some other spirits who now, who had more awareness at that time and can show me pictures. Mm. Yeah. Now, you, you would have also been aware during that period that there is times when large groups of malevolent spirits left me Yes. As well, had you observed? Well, it's those like times? it's like a train station. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's groups coming in and out around you constantly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yes, certainly, there's certainly times where um, a large, heavy influence around you would move off mm -hmm. very rapidly. And then after that period, would you notice uh, correlating issues with my body? Like, could you see the correlation between? Yes. Addressing something in my body and then the large group of spirits leaving. Well, it's probably more fair to say that I see that now mm. In, mm. in hindsight. Yeah. I don't think, no, I can't say in all honesty that I really established that connection. Mm. Uh, because you, this... It hasn't been typical observing you. So as I mentioned earlier, when I was observing people on Earth, it, it, was, it was quite obvious the, um, the influence. It was almost observable, the influence upon the, so the spirit influence upon the person on Earth, their correlating behavior and the worsening in their condition at times or the changes in the, the flow of their desires. Mm -hmm. um, where, this is why I decided to study you because nothing seemed to match. Mm -hmm. And so I have to say in all honesty that I haven't really correlated the changes in your spirit body with anything external. Right. So you've more just looked at it in terms of uh, correlation with behaviour rather, yes. than, rather than correlation with uh, entities leaving or attaching. That's right. Yep. Yep. All right. So... so um, also, from uh, the age of about 33 onwards, mm -hmm. um, well, let's, uh, no, let's rewind back a bit further. From, uh, as you know, from the age of about 10 onwards, I started to realise that I didn't remember anything. Mm -hmm. um, and um, how did that look in, in the spirit body? Were there any changes to the spirit body as a result of understanding of that. you understanding that mm. oh i see you're not asking about the condition itself mm. um this is again where i i feel like my observations have been incomplete because i didn't back then you were still very strange mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it, well you always have been and so it no i don't i can't say that i did mm -hmm. now if we forward to when uh, when i began to emotionally process properly which which sort of began when i was 33 34 mm -hmm. started with the stresses i was under there and then yes. and then worked the way through what 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 did you feel about that time when you when you look back on it now you must have thought i was a bit of a crazy nut doing that <laughs> um, Aside yes. from seeing the results of it. <laughs> well, that's right. I, yeah. Again, this is where I viewed you as an anomaly, so I wouldn't have recommended it for anyone else. Yeah. But I could see that this, it's been very strange. So I could see how much that benefited you from a spirit body perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see that you began to make better choices. Mm -hmm. Um. But I still had the issue of these very significant um, problems within your spirit body as well that mm -hmm. were still there. So mm -hmm. it was almost as if the light got brighter uh, and certain issues did resolve, but then there was still these other ones that were still very significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the ones that were very significant, um, could you see that they had been there longer? Like... 
Yes, uh, in that they seemed to never shift. <laughs> yeah, from the time of observation when yep. I was eight to then, it's always sort of been the same with those significant mm -hmm. things. Yes. Um, and like, is there any of them that did shift that you could observe? Certainly there were some, what I would call the minor uh, energy flow issues. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, you, I mean, you have this ish, this kind of a crater in your left lower abdomen mm -hmm. that is that is never changing. Mm -hmm. um, that has been very significant. Mm -hmm. And certain other areas around your heart mm -hmm. did begin to, to begin to lighten mm -hmm. and brighten. Uh, although there was still it was still quite a lot there, mm -hmm. and I would say that. Um, the time when you first considered that you may be different mm -hmm. in terms of being returned, there was a significant change then in terms of the level of brightness of your body, the way it, the definition, mm -hmm. uh, and there was changes in this heart region then at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's more significant at that time. Yeah. Now the crater in the uh, abdomen mm -hmm. that you can observe. Mm -hmm. um, have you observed anything that I've been doing lately that actually has ha made any slight change to that? Yes, I would say so. Mm -hmm. I would say so. Uh, let me consider this answer carefully. Mm -hmm. I suppose what I'm trying to establish for our listeners is this. There are correlation to injury and healing of that injury and specific emotions because you've been with me for such a long time mm. you would have observed me feel specific emotion certainly and then observed the lightening of a particular part yes. of my spirit body yes. as a result of feeling that emotion mm -hmm. and um you have also observed the extent of the emotion like you know that i've had to go through a lot of emotion not not yes but like majority of people on this planet have no understanding about the extent uh, and probably won't have any understanding about the extent of the motion for their entire life probably uh, mm -hmm. as to what kind how much emotion i've had to go through um but it, 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 looking at the correlation between what type of emotion the color yes was that was being released and the improvement in the particular area of the body. So for example, when you met me when I was eight, um, I, as you know, I had a very dark area around my chest. Um, I always mm. had asthma um, mm. as so a lot of, a lot of grief mixed with fear. Yes. Yeah. So is this what you want me to discuss? What I saw you observe and yes. then the physical, sorry, and I what, saw you release. And then what you saw release and the relationship between that and what you saw in the body. Okay, yes. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, that one is very obvious. In the heart region, there was a lot of heaviness and sort of uh, darkness there. Mm -hmm. uh, more in terms of a brownie kind of a colour at times. Uh, that that definitely began to shift at that 33 year old point mm -hmm. as you did release grief mm. um, also at that time uh, 33 there was a there was an overall change in something that we um, that we relate to having a sense of purpose and direction and drive mm-hmm so that would that affects the circulation if you like the mm -hmm. circulatory system of the spirit body mm -hmm. and so we saw as you uh released some emotion surrounding uh, duty surrounding um uh, fear of connecting to your personal desires for yourself mm -hmm. that there was a, a bright a, a a better circulation uh, mm -hmm. in the in the spirit body mm -hmm. and and so the the colors there went from again a more of a darky murky green mm -hmm. to a, sort of almost a, a yellowy lighter brighter color mm -hmm. uh, so that happened then mm -hmm. um, and then uh, again uh, you know 
when you started to connect to your um, significance, if you like, mm-hmm. or was your your identity, you would say, mm-hmm. um, this this it further improved again, mm-hmm. and the same thing with the fear and grief. We, what I understand now from my last month's investigation, there's also a correlation between um, longing as you would call it, and mm. desire and the effect that that has on the spirit body. So mm-hmm. there's the release of emotion affects the spirit body and that is something that um, observation of you has really brought into sharp focus. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've always been interested in motivation mm-hmm. and that that was very pronounced as well, that as your motivations changed, again, I wasn't always 100% good at making the correlation between release of emotion and motivation. Mm. Um, But it's quite obvious now in hindsight that as you release things, your motivation changed, but both processes altered the the functioning of your spirit body. Mm. So it's like releasing something alters the functioning, Mm -hmm. but also getting something (laughs) alters the function as well. Uh, Yes, wanting something. Wanting something alters the function as well. And this is why in our assistance groups in 2016, we've been trying to present to people the importance of firstly dealing with the, what's your will, you know, what, what's in you already, but also having desires, you know, and yes. acting upon desires. So it's very important to see both of those things in play. So, so when you compare that with what would normally happen to an individual on earth, because obviously you've had a lot of mm-hmm. examination of what, you know, every most, most other people's experiences as well mm-hmm. what would you notice would would anybody generally release stuff over the period of their life well no and that's um yeah, no that does happen on occasion for mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. Um, uh, again i've possibly been uh, more focused on the motivational change in yeah. a person and how that positively impacts their spirit body but it, again in hindsight when i analyze it very often a change in motivation is preceded by the release of emotion. Mm. Uh, So you do see that on earth, but as a general um, whole, uh, as if you're speaking in in terms of a um, general trend, Mm -hmm. perhaps, Mm -hmm. the trend on earth is that people's condition worsens, their spirit body worsens Mm. while Mm. they live on earth. Mm. And they don't, the the issues that we see in the body only um, get worse Mm. over the period of the lifespan. Mm. Sometimes they start out quite small. Mm. Um, You know, we see them as weaknesses at Mm -hmm. the time of of birth Mm -hmm. within the the body, um, which then are heightened Mm -hmm. over the lifespan. Until they become even the cause of death in many cases. Mm. Mm. Now, now obviously, uh, I've looked at how this occurs also in the spirit world, Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and I, therefore was aware that it was possible to improve in the spirit body. Yes. Um, but again, I, I didn't pay enough focus to pay enough attention to the emotional aspect, more on the motivation, mm. uh, the decision making, mm. the behaviour. Mm. Uh, and certainly I could see that when one made changes in that, there was an improvement. Mm. Now, in the discussions we've had over the last month, um, because besides the discussions you and I have had, obviously you've had some discussions with me in other other forms now, Um, you you would be starting to see the correlation between what we're calling God's way, which is, you know, the the way of progressing towards God, that it's a very emotional sort of a way. And and anybody who's really on that way does have... uh, this process of going through emotions on a fa- on a regular basis. Yes. Um, now, did that does it help you sort of believing that now when you look at my experience? Yes, certainly. Yeah. A lot of things have a lot of questions that I've had sort of outstanding or been pondering or trying to analyze. Many things have been resolved. Uh, through this last past month. Mm, mm. Um, however, there there's still things that interest me in terms of uh, 
and and this is really evidence for your return in in, in internally for myself but mm-hmm. the fact that your spirit body does appear bright while there is still significant issues within the body sort of isolated issues mm-hmm. isolated uh, injuries you would probably call it in mm-hmm. the body mm-hmm. um that is unusual and that is not so what i notice for myself is that now that i've started to engage this process i'm aware of the issues in my body if i engage with an emotional process i'm i'm aware that that lessens diminishes or releases that issue within my spirit body mm. but concurrently the overall brightness of my body improves mm. so those two things are matching mm-hmm. if that makes sense it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a discernible um uh, progression Mm -hmm. in terms of release of issue in proof of brightness Mm -hmm. and the um the issue and the level of brightness that can be achieved there's not a large differential between the two Mm -hmm. whereas when i observe you and others there is this differential Mm -hmm. and that's fascinating Mm -hmm. Mm. so when you say others you mean the others who who of who you know to be the ones of 14, yes. one of the 14 who have returned. Yeah. Um, the last question I'd probably like to ask is about uh, prayer mm-hmm. and what you observe with prayer. As a spirit, when you observe me praying, mm. what do you then observe happens? Well, yes, and this is, I f- feel sort of moved by this, mm-hmm. I suppose. And, and also a little um, humbled <laughs> that I didn't understand you praying mm-hmm. until recently. Mm-hmm. And that only, of course, added to the confusion. So what did, before you talk about what you observed, what did you, when I prayed, what did you think at the time? I thought it was something to do with your desire and motivations changing. Mm-hmm. And while I can see that's strictly true, Mm -hmm. I didn't really attribute it to prayer in the classical sense that I understood prayer. Mm -hmm. Um, I understood that you have motivations and behaviours that are very orientated around the relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But I feel I didn't reason about that correctly Mm -hmm. because I still had my own issues around God and religion and, and even prayer that that was sort of a moral, uh, and when I say moral, I mean a behavioural um, uh, journey that one undertook and, and an intellectual one, mm-hmm. a method of changing. I, I didn't really, um, I, I suppose I, I conceptualise God as religion, which is, mm-hmm. is I feel mm-hmm. foolish now about that, but, you know, I saw... Uh, the concept of God as just a set of rules and sort of a, a higher ideal that you aspire to. And um, I didn't really ever um, confront what, who and what I thought God was. Mm-hmm. I could just see that some people um, had certain behaviours, some people uh, felt orientated towards that and they did certain things. And, and so... Uh, I so it would it be correct to different. so would it be correct to say you were searching for a scientific explanation to the phenomena? No, uh, which phenomena? The, what happened when I prayed? Like, uh, well, no, I thought it was something to do with your. So okay, yep. so um, you already had a brightened spirit body to others that I observed. Yeah. Uh, And when you engaged what I thought was just this uh, desire or um, motivation in -hmm. a certain direction, say for God, Mm -hmm. I thought that the brightness really that you experienced as a result, the heightened brightness, which is which was your question. Mm -hmm. um, So I I saw that you became almost brilliant Mm -hmm. at certain times. I thought that that was something to do with the capacity of your spirit body Mm -hmm. that was singular to yourself or others well i i really wasn't aware of others until very recently Mm -hmm. so uh, to yourself and while i observe sometimes people on earth with what i now understand to be praying and 
um, experiencing some heightened brightness, I still was very much, because of my lack of faith or desire to know or understand anything about God mm -hmm. as a being, who, just as I mentioned to you earlier, how moving it was to observe this um, it, presence of God or this lightness from God to come down and surround those those women. Mm. Uh, I didn't. I, I was completely uh, blocked to seeing that occurring at other times because of my own issues with not wanting to explore my beliefs around God. Mm. And so, um, uh, when I saw other people on Earth pray, what I now understand to be praying. I again attributed the brightness that some of them experienced to uh, something about them, the the beautiful benefit of having a loving motivation, or that mm -hmm. this this positively impacts the health of the spirit body, mm -hmm. um, and engaging in behaviours that are congruent with your moral ideas and how that's beneficial. Mm -hmm. it, it was a very kind of clinical uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. Does that answer mm -hmm. your question? Yeah. So yeah. it sort of sounds to me like you were co-relating it with another with another cause mm, rather than one from within the individual yeah and rather than seeing that perhaps there was this alternative cause yes you preferred to co-relate it with yes. <laughs> that other cause yes. the, the more the more uh, the cause that you'd already measured should yes. I, should I say yes mm. Mm. yeah no, that's interesting too isn't it how we do that how we we have a preconceived notion, so we're trying to match everything to our preconceived notion mm. rather than seeing the possibility of it being something alternate. Yes, and, mm. and as I mentioned earlier, I, I think that in other areas of my investigation at different times of my life on Earth and in here in the spirit world as well, I've been more open to um, thinking, well, perhaps this is something beyond what I've thought of before and I'll, I'll investigate that with a very open mind. Mm. But uh, because of my particular issues with men, my father, God, I, I, didn't, I didn't investigate. Not those possibilities. Yes. You're looking for other possibilities. Yes. But not those particular ones. It's the constraint of my an analysis that has been so striking for mm. me to, to understand... I was constraining my own analysis and my analytical uh, pathways mm -hmm. because I was resistant to, to these uh, issues mm -hmm. from my past. Mm -hmm. And that's such a message that I wish to share with everyone now mm -hmm. because it, it's such a... Uh, you kick yourself. Mm -hmm. Afterwards. <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, and, and, if, and if any scientist does not... Uh, consider what are the emotional constraints mm. upon their analysis, then they will be limited. Yes. And, and that's been a revelation for me. Mm. Uh, it seems, again, like so many things I've learned in the last month, it seems highly obvious. And After yet the fact. when I was in it, <laughs> yeah. I thought that I was being very logical. And, uh, and even if someone had have confronted me with the, or posed to me the idea I would have said, yes, 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 that's absolutely logical, of course. But it wasn't until I was confronted in my own limitations yes. that I saw how limited I was yeah. uh, and saw how I wasn't doing the logical thing, even though the concept itself made sense to me. Yeah, and this is where I see a lot of people run into trouble when they're listening to Divine Truth. They're thinking they get it without getting it mm. and because they think... Their intellect thinks that they that what they think is what it is, yeah. <laughs> and it's a very difficult yeah. uh, thing to overcome, as you know. And and, and also, it's easy to deny mm. what is inside of us. Uh, you know, if someone had said to me that you have issues about God or your father, I would have you know been able to have a rational conversation. Mm depending on how that idea was presented to me mm. and a conversation that rationalized that I didn't have any issues. Mm. Um, and so this is where one must be very sincere, I see now, mm. and very perceptive of one's own motivations and emotions. Yes, mm. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, as you know, there's been people that have emailed us recently about, uh, is his name Jordan? Um, He's a man on earth anyway who's, who's um, I just forget his name now, Mary and I have been listening to him recently as well, 
who discusses a lot of natural love type principles in his videos. Uh, Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, to, that's yes. right, yeah. And many people have been emailing us saying, oh, what he's teaching is what you're teaching. Hmm. And, and I'm sort of going, what, how, how do you think that? You know, like, it's like to me, you know, what he's teaching is wonderful in a lot of ways because it is the path to natural love. It's mm -hmm. the path to the sixth sphere. And there's very few people on earth, as you know, teaching that. Yeah. But um, so it's wonderful that, he, that we have someone on earth that is actually teaching it mm -hmm. and, uh, and who's gaining some uh, popularity. But for somebody to think then that it's exactly the same as what we're teaching, it's like, it's, it's not the same thing at all. There are obvious correlations because we are teaching some natural love mm. principles, mm. But, uh, but the whole aspect of God is missing out of the equation. <laughs> yes, and I think that's a, it's a fascinating thing to posit, like if all of humanity simply just focused on their true emotions about as they are now about God mm. and was willing to not to explore them with the purpose even of identifying if God was real or not, but just with the purpose of saying, well, what do I really feel about it? And I will feel all of what I feel about it. Mm. Uh, just how different life would be because, um, and, and obviously, you know, everyone would come to feel that there is a God, but even, <laughs> even if they didn't think that that would be the case, yeah. um, just to do that is incredibly opening yeah. in terms yeah. of uh, thought and ideas mm. and obviously emotion. But what, what one perceives is possible is, is so limited by beliefs about God. And that's mm. something that I really did not consider. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, that's the thing I think I find so amazing about on earth, there's so many brilliant minds and yet the brilliance doesn't carry over into brilliant thinking about God. Mm. And, and, it, and it just constantly surprises me actually. And not surprises me in the sense that I know the underlying reason is mm. because people are so distant from God and there's so many injuries, emotional injuries relating to the concept of a God that, that it prevents even the most brilliant of minds mm. from conceiving the possibility when to me it's such a logical mm. <laughs> step, you know, yes. to, to, to conceive of the possibility. Um, yes, and mm. to, while conceiving of the possibility to experience whatever um, emotion is triggered through that process, mm. Uh, that that to me is the answer. Mm, yeah, so so it, it's it's good that you've mentioned those things because I feel that um, you know a lot of, a lot of times when people hear God's truth uh, for the first time, they're always trying to correlate it to things I've already heard that they already believe, mm. and they basically want to say that's the same as this all the mm. time, and. And I suppose in your experience, and, and I think what our listeners will get a bit of a picture of with your experience is you are often correlating something you already believed mm. with something that you didn't know much about at the mm. time. And then as a result of that, not looking more into the thing you didn't know yes. much about. I, and it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's a, such a natural tendency mm -hmm. to seek for answers that don't challenge. Yes, yes. And to seek the familiar. Yes. And to seek, because inherent in that, I suppose, is a sense of comfort that I understand the world. And as you know, with my emotion with my father, I've had to really analyse in the last month uh, um, the how much my drive for research and knowledge has been around avoiding the feeling of uh, humiliation when I don't know something. Mm. And yeah. so the the tendency to to say, oh yes, I know it, uh, or I, I can explain it this way, or that's just like this other thing, is very. Um, it helps one avoid this feeling of of I'm open. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm open to the and it, it, it's a it's a wonderful experience for me now to be able to say the words I don't know. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, yeah. To ask more questions, in fact. Yes, um, and and of course, the asking of more questions always really uh, results in more answers, yeah. <laughs> which is another <laughs> positive, yeah. obviously. Um, yeah. 
which is something that I've said for many, many years, as you know. The, the, I feel the interesting thing, when some of our listeners have said things like, you know, oh, you know, I've shown my mum and dad and my family divine truth, but it's too confronting for them. So what I do is I show them this, like Jordan Peterson's uh, material, mm-hmm. and they love that, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's a good reason why they love it, and that is because it does not confront any concepts about God. Yes. And, and that's why people are drawn to it, because they don't have to address some of the deepest emotional injuries that, the, that humanity on the planet has that is in, in, inhibiting humanity's growth. Yes, <laughs> and isn't that funny? Because for me, it was that one question to uh, just to confront the issue about God mm. that has altered my life dramatically. And mm. so if, if people are, as you say, just drawn to this um, material because it doesn't confront the issues about God, then they're placing the biggest limitation upon themselves possible mm. if, if they do it purely in avoidance of the issue about God, I should say. I, yes. I don't think that exploration of the natural love path is... It was not bad in itself, no. but it can be misleading because if you think you're talking about God when you're not, mm. or you think that talking about energy or other things is the same as talking about mm. God, now you it's going to be damaging to you. Yes. And now it's going to have quite a large impact on the rest of your life is, mm. is what I feel. So some, some seemingly innocent discussions about God's mm. like this and God's like that can, can, can turn uh, a discussion about God into into a dis- just a discussion about energy, which now basically dismisses the whole concept of a personal God mm. and a, per- a God with personality. Mm. The the other thing, the other comment that's often been made is these sort of comments relating to personal truth, which is another issue you've confronted mm. this last month. And that uh, that what I find is very interesting here. Most people, when they first come to divine truth, are very interested in the externals, mm-hmm. um, you know, understanding how everything works and how the universe works and the spirit world and even these kind of discussions, these mediumship sort of discussions that we do, usually get a lot more views than any other thing mm-hmm. we talk about. And that the reason why is because people are fascinated with you know life after death and whether there is life after death and so forth. But what I notice is when you start changing the focus from the universal to the personal, yes. now it's all like closed mindedness, closed heart, rejection, rejection mm. and rage usually and anger mm. uh, are the commonplace. Well, and I think that our relationship, if you could call it that, is a perfect analogy of that. I mean, I've spent... Uh, nearly 50 years of, of, of an earth life mm-hmm. observing you, uh, analysing you, external external to having a, a connection with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, then when we have the connection and through that process, something personal is, um, is required of me, but mm-hmm. also is... Um, uh, is engaged in me, is confronted in me, any of those things, mm-hmm. that's when... Um, uh, the growth that I've experienced in the last month has been far more rapid and uh, um, uh, fulfilling than mm. any other growth I've ever experienced. Yeah, so I suppose what I'm getting at there is you've got that, this personal, this this sincere personal analysis rather than, uh, you know, just a desire for external truths mm. coupled with this desire for God. Mm. And if you marry those two things together, mm. now, you know, your growth can significantly change yes. rather than it being just a very slow progress or in for most people on earth, as you pointed out, <laughs> a slow degression, yes. right? you know, regression. regression. Well, it's, you can't even call it regression. No, it's more degression. De- 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 degradation. <laughs> degradation. Yes. You know? <laughs> because it, one arrives in a state that is, that is not... You, people go into like a negative state from mm, that point. So, that's right. so if we were just to regress to that state, that would be better. <laughs> better, <laughs> yeah. But most but people no, don't go. develop beyond that state, no. and that's the problem. Yeah, and and this not is not until they reach the spirit life, I should say. Yeah, and I think I think your experience over the last month sort of illustrates this twofold thing of mm. the need to deal with the God issue mm. properly, rather mm. than just 
give it, um, you know, words or, you know, a little bit of thought and then dismissal. Mm. And also the need to, do, to, to truly be sincere in your personal analysis of yourself. Mm. And, and this is what I notice um, is like these are the two main reasons why God's truth is not really doing well on the planet mm. at the moment. The, f the, f the first issue that God herself is dismissed mm. and the second issue that the desire for self-analysis is yes. is basically almost non-existent yes in the average person and it's not valued i didn't value no, no, that no and it's also viewed as not important it's almost almost it's viewed as uh, a degree of masochism in terms of <laughs> you know attempting to harm oneself almost mm. is the way mm. it's almost viewed it mm. seems to me and and yet what I notice in many of our readers' responses that we get, uh, which has been very similar to your own uh, ex example, as you've said, in that there's either this complete, there's this thought that what we're teaching with regard to divine truth is the same thing couched in different words mm. to what they're hearing from other people, mm. and it's not, mm. but they believe it is, and so they think it is, and so they act like it is. And then on the second side of things, None of the things that do with the natural love path really do strongly emphasize <laughs> this need for deep self-analysis and accurate self-analysis as well. And, Excuse me. and it seems to me that those two things, uh, if we can address them, mm. um, then there is some basically hope that we can mm. we can sort of give some more truth on the planet yes uh, and get some more truth to the planet than is currently here yes a, a, an individual must be willing to confront their their relationship with themselves and their understanding of themselves and confront their relationship with god and their understanding of god that's it yes yeah that's yes. it and i feel and i feel that people need to stop even people who are listening to us at the moment, they need to stop trying to compare it with things they've already heard. Mm. Because if the reality is if they're doing that, they still do not understand divine truth mm. and they still don't really get God. Mm. Um, because, because any relationship with God, as you know, completely different than what you imagine it yes. is going to be. <laughs> Utterly distinct yes. from what yeah. I perceived. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, no, that's been a good, good chat. And, and I was still thinking, too, uh, about the thing we discussed last time, which is having some kind of uh, structured discussion that yes. can help people come through it. But I'm still sort of thinking about how to achieve that in a way that people will engage, you know. Mm. Um, so, so if you come up with any ideas there in our next discussions that we have, uh, feel free to share them. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Yeah. And I have some ideas as well, and we can discuss them in private perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Yes. and we'll work through what, what we're going to do there um, in terms of helping people. We're really, it's about trying to help people have those two breakthroughs. Mm. The breakthrough into really understanding the desire for a relationship with God, and also the breakthrough into really understanding and wanting, desiring to understand yourself. Well, I, and I feel quite, um, I, I guess uh, before I leave, I would like to say I feel very privileged to, to have these interactions with yourself and I thank you very much. And I also feel very privileged that I, that I followed my curiosity to observe you because obviously that's brought about this amazing series of events. Yeah, now. yeah. Um, but I also feel quite um, humbled that you would want to uh, involve me in such a discussion because while I feel um, strongly about those issues now, I don't feel I have much experience as yet. I'm still I think very that's much one of the learning. reasons why I like to involve you because, uh, because uh, many of the feelings you will go through uh, in your investigations are feelings that most of the people who are listening are yet to go through. Mm. And, and but they are closer to that, to going through them than they are say, to a celestial spirit mm. or to a person who is, has, has a, a deeper level of understanding of things that most people on earth still are not getting at all. It's, a, it's about, I suppose it's about going to school, isn't it? In mm. some ways, that's how I see it. It's, it's like 
do we create a class that's for you know university graduates mm. or do we create I, I, my feeling is we and i don't mean to dismiss all of our wonderful listeners who are having some intelligence but really a lot of what we need to g gather first is is like a class for preschoolers <laughs> mm. in a lot of ways mm. and we need to work our way through that to get to an understanding the proper understanding of what's actually being talked about mm. and what I feel sometimes is the best way to achieve that um, as many of our listeners will be aware they often connect to the people in the hells or, or in the first sphere who we've been talking to more than they do connect to one of our celestial friends when they yes. come to speak which is unfortunate mm. um, because our celestial friends obviously have you mean they that. they listen more they listen more mm. and they're more self-reflective mm. so so a celestial spirit can often come and say look at this and look at that and most of our listeners will dismiss it mm. and yet a first fear spirit or one in, who's in the hell's being helped can come and say it and actually go through the experience with us yes and a lot more of our listeners connect to that mm. yeah so you're saying you would like me to be open about my investigations and experiences from here on and how you feel would be happy and how you do. feel about them yes and and what kind of feelings you've had because you because you've also made some progress to the third sphere now and what feelings you've had in that first sphere to the third sphere transition mm the feeling and how long it's taken and how you felt about that and what limited you and these kind of things I feel are what people need to hear mm. because it, because that's where most people on earth are at mm. you know they're at that stage of resistance not wanting to you know not understanding that they've got all these emotions about God that they don't want to address and also not understanding they've got all these emotions about not wanting to look at themselves and why mm. and thinking that it's a terrible trauma rather than a joy mm. to examine oneself and and these particular things if, if we get the perspective of a person who's just gone through it mm. that's often more powerful than the perspective of a person who went through it a thousand years ago yes yeah, so mm. so you're also saying that um you would benefit or you would like to hear about my experience and not not solely my thoughts were about solely uh discussing my observance of you mm. but you're saying mm. no it's more my personal uh yeah explorations and I, I yes i would be happy to do that well discussing your observance of me does clarify some truths mm. but it often doesn't clarify the truths for people who are in their first incarnation because mm. because obviously you're examining a person who's who's returned not in their first incarnation yes. and and the majority as you know or everyone on the planet other than the people who have returned are in their first incarnation so so many of them might listen to some of our experiences and sort of understand them to a degree um, but as they can see now even a third sphere spirit doesn't really understand mm. much of these experiences yet because there's so much to investigate and there's just a huge amount of information to digest and frequently they don't also feel it as a connection to their own life mm. it's just in some ways the way i sort of feel it about it is that myself mary and others of the 14 have you know we've got specific things to go through we need to understand that we need to grasp that there's books being written about that there's scientific journals as you probably now realize scientific yeah. journals in oftentimes a few high spheres that you know discuss these particular matters there, there are people documenting those particular things but the main problem we have here on earth and as you know the main problem they have when we transist into the spirit world the first time around is is the, all of the unknowns that that we haven't faced mm. and and i feel that it's much better if our the prior you know it doesn't it's it's not too bad to still discuss some of these other matters but to actually discuss more about what you observe in general yes right and and also with specific individuals that are in their first incarnation is probably more beneficial does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, and yeah. I'd be happy to do that with you. Mm. I must leave now no, as um, the, I can't maintain now. the connection any longer. <laughs> yeah. 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 So thanks for your time and uh, thanks for Mary's time too, actually. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, sorry. He Feeling was just, a bit tired. Yeah. I'm a bit tired yeah. and I could. I, uh,
yeah, he was different in and out, in and out there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So we'd like to thank you guys for listening to that conversation yeah. with Stuart. Yeah. The conversations with Stuart, the last two have been quite interesting, haven't they? And, uh, and you know, hopefully we'll have more of those where we'll be able to illustrate things that we've been talking about with people to better so they understand the difference between the natural love path mm. and, the, and God's path. And rather than just assuming that because, you know, that the two things are the same thing, yeah. which is still, I feel, a big problem with most of our listeners, actually, because mm. we get constant emails, don't we, babe, where they just... Yeah. Where people, people are saying, oh, it's the same as this or, or, or it's the yes. same as that. Or, yes, we do. You know, yeah. and then as soon as we start raising personal issues with them, everyone yes. spits a dummy <laughs> and runs away. <laughs> and often it takes, you know, some people have been listening five, ten years and you raise one personal issue. Yeah. And they don't like you anymore. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. they don't understand the joy of dis personal discovery and what it's going to lead you to. Yeah, that's mm. a, that's a big thing, isn't it? And mm. and also this thing about discovery of God. I mean, that's that's a big issue. For yeah, everyone, I feel it's it? such a big issue. Like people are still thinking that when people talk about energy, they're really talking about God. When people talk about you know the power from the universe, they're really talking about God. And there's all this co-relational stuff that keeps on happening where they're co-relating it in their my own mind because they don't want to confront their true feelings about god yeah and, and we need to address it you know because it's becoming a major problem in terms of people <laughs> being able to even hear god's truth yeah yeah well i mean yeah i agree yeah so yeah. So that's why one of our goals is over the coming years to help you <laughs> along that uh, along that road. Hopefully you've enjoyed our discussion, and we possibly will have another one. We just need to have a bit of a rest now. Mary Ann needs to have a bit of a rest and a and a, and some and something to eat too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and we might do a bit more uh, after after this when we've had, had a bit of a rest. But thanks for your time, and hopefully you've enjoyed our discussion with Stuart. Mm. <laughs>